Welcome to another live session. I hope you all are doing great and are staying positive, motivated and creative in this time. Today I'm going to try to inspire you on how to do beautiful things with very little. Chocolate paint, um, absolutely my go-to. Someone asked in this week, did you use chocolate paint? And I can't even remember on which surface and I said, everything in my house has been chocolate. I think the only things that haven't been chocolate is the children and my husband. And for, for not being chocolate, they stay out of my way, else I'll paint them too. So let me show you what we're going to create today. We have these scatters in our room and Yaka just hates them. They don't look like this, yet they usually, and forgive the back, but I put a nice um, inner inside they look like this in the actual life and I've decided to give them new life a new look by using potatoes and to cut out different shapes out of potatoes we've done it as children potato stamping and now I'm doing it again so if you move closer this is what my cut potato looks like so I've just taken out sections in between the fuller sections. Here's the one I've used on the other scatter. And I'm now going to show you how easy it is. I'm actually not dipping it inside the paint. I'm using an artist brush. Then I paint my potato. So make sure there's a nice amount of paint on my potato. And this is how easy it is. Let's move this away. And I'm stamping, adding paint. And the reason I'm painting it on is you actually can't then make mistakes and the paint can't um, make blotches on your surface. Just see that it's neat, stamp, and repeat and once this is done you have beautiful fabric stamping patterns on a surface paint and stamp and how easy is that now for some tips make sure the fabric you're working on is a natural woven fabric. Once you are done with your stamping, iron at the back with a medium heat iron just to secure the paint. And when you want to wash, hand wash in cold water. And if I now, and any patterns can be cut, any colors can be used. So you can be adventurous in using all different colors. In my room, this will just work perfectly. And now what I've done at the bottom section, oh, and I want to show you what I've put on the inside of my pillow. And now I'm just changing direction of my potato. And what a fun activity this is to do with your children. They can transform all pillowcases. You can keep it as art pieces. Maybe it comes out so beautifully that you actually do want to use it in their rooms. This is really a fun activity that the entire family can be involved in. If you start, I promise you, you don't want to stop. It can be done on um, tablecloths, um, curtains, so I napkins. Can you imagine if you have beautiful stamped napkins on a nicely set table, how beautiful that is? And the reward is sweet to know that's something that you have created. Just a tip, what I have done on the inside of my pillowcase is I've just put one of those flat cutting boards just to create a very um, hard surface, stable surface to work on instead of newspaper. And then you just move it inside your pillow as you need to reach more sections. Okay, there's just a few stamps being completed, but I think the tips make sense and once it's done, this is what it looks like. 
if you want to incorporate different colors on different sections of the potato, you can even do that to have something more colorful if color is something you love. The next stamping tip and inspiration I'm going to share with you is done on canvas. Now quickly walk with me to a wall that I have prepped. So the wall I've painted onto the bricks with Danny Stair. Can you see that gaily? And then this was an old canvas that I repainted. It was actually had um, some of Yaku's um, artwork on it, something that he liked that I transformed. I haven't told him that yet. But now it's a DIY fun activity to create art in your own space and also something that the children can do with you. And they can actually be part of this entire process and you can, whether it's a book, if you don't have canvases at this moment, have, let them stamp onto books, old files. If you do have canvases, you can do it. Let me show you the steps I have followed. So first, I have spread some stencil of Paris onto my canvas. So very roughly and evenly, and that's actually also one of the reasons why it will be such a great success to do it with your children, because they are free to explore. I hope it made sense, but if you can see it's roughly, it's unevenly, it's not perfect. And that's exactly what you want. Next, I'm going, here's a board that has been stenciled already and now I'm going to paint Davit on top of that. You can actually use any colour. Let me just find a paintbrush. Mine has miraculously disappeared and I'm sure it's thanks to Maestro. He actually stole my um, potatoes yesterday. But not having a lot of potatoes left with lockdown it was a very nerve-wracking experience but my family if you are listening you always thought that I'm not a runner I would have proved you differently yesterday because Maestro is a Vamarana he can run at 68 kilometers per hour and I caught him with the potato in his mouth okay so now I'm painting on top of my stencil of Paris. You can't really see it, but this gives a nice coating and base for you to start your stamping onto. Okay, so once this is done, wait for the stencil, for the paint to dry. The same with your stencil of Paris. Once you've applied it, wait for it. There's the wet stencil of Paris. Wait for it to dry. Once dry, give a base coat in any color of your choice. And once the base coat is dry, we are going to start with a stamping process. Now here, I have a different stamp. It's like the one on the canvas. So I'm going to use some Comforts Blue. And I'm going to use some fine lining. You can use any colours and you can make it the way you love it. Colours that you prefer. And the third colour I'm going to use is Dawn's Wash. Just give this a shake. And I have artist brushes. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have a separate brush for the lighter colors and a brush for my darker color and once again I paint onto my potato and I stamp and I paint fine lining on top I don't clean it because the different colors that I add every time will create a different tone. And I stamp. 
on the canvas I've showed you on the wall, it was just a larger canvas, but the technique and the tips remain the same. And you can, as I've mentioned, cut out your own patterns, different patterns to mine. And I stamp. And can you see how the colors vary every each time? Now I can add some Comfort's Blue again. And the roughness and the unevenness of the stencil of Paris at the bottom creates a beautiful effect. And fine lining. And dance wash. And this is how it's done. Quite simple and easy. Now to all of you, I have seen the most hilarious posts on Facebook of people saying that they don't have wine left. Neither have I, but I have a cork left. Let me show you what you can do with this. Dip it in a colorful color. Once again, you use colors that you like. I just remove excess and just here and there, you can add it, just a splash of color on your canvas. Let's use false place as well. And let's put one over there. And that's exactly, Kaylee, if we can walk to the canvas again, this is exactly what I've done on this canvas. So there's a, the three colors I've used, Paul's Place, um, there's John's Joy, Bright Yellow, Simon and Shorty on my drops. And you have a very personalized piece of artwork in your space. Okay, I hope stamping makes sense and those are the steps. Let's go to our piece of furniture and let's start painting it. Let me show you what we're going to do. So the furniture piece I have posted on the invite. I have posted the frame that I've already painted. I have a twin, twin covers that looks like this. Once I finish styling them, put them together, I'll take a final picture, but I'm going to show you step by step how to paint and how to distress, a two-tone distress today. So what I do is I select my colors and every time I start a project, that's actually the hardest part, is to decide which colors you're going to use and which colors will go best into the space that you're busy transforming. Choose colors that make you happy. That's the first step. Choose colors that work together. Look at your floors. See what the color is of your tiles. Make sure you select a color that complements your floors. Because most of the times, that's the one thing that we cannot change. And I always love when I do a room makeover to just give a new lick of paint on the ceiling as well, because then everything looks well um, styled and well rounded off. So I'm using a color, Danny Stay. I'm going to start painting this side of my cover just to show again the use of a foam roller. On Thursday, we are going to paint melamine surfaces. I'm going to do that right from the start. Cleaning, the cutting, the painting with a mohair roller so that you can see exactly what to do with melamine surfaces. We won't be able to glaze on Thursday, but I'll show you on Tuesday next week the glazing process. So today we're working with the foam roller and I'm going to show again tips. Very important when working with chalk or paint and I'm sorry if I repeat this, and but there are people that's new on this video is to clean your surface well with lacquer thinners. I use Power Fix and I'm going to show you. I've got 
I made sure I have plenty supplies of thinners before lockdown. That's what Power Fix's lacquer thinners looks like. So you clean your surface well with lacquer thinners. Then you wait between 20 to 40 minutes, minutes for the thinners to evaporate. And only then can you start painting. When painting flat surfaces, like over here, and I have Kaylee. Kaylee, next week, you need to show them what you look like, that they can see who does all the hard work behind the camera. So I'm going to paint here with Danny Steen. I have already cleaned it, because we don't have 20 minutes to wait for the thinners to evaporate. I thoroughly wet my foam roller 110 millimeters with paint and I roll it onto the surface. The nice thing about a foam roller is that you can change direction. Something that you could have done before you started rolling was to do your cut lines. Okay. So can you see there's a generous amount of paint and once I want to even it out, I just press very lightly to get a very even flat finish on my surface. Now there are a few questions on the Choco Creations Facebook page. One of them is what makes Choco paint different to other chalk paints on the market. And our philosophy as part of the Choco family and company is to never ever badmouth any other brand. What we can tell you is what we believe in and what makes Choco unique and different. Choco has a built-in sealer. So there's no need for me if I don't have children in the house and I know no fatty fingers will ever touch this piece of furniture, I don't need to seal it. If I like a matte finish, I'm only painting and then the job is done. If you want to create a more heart wearing surface and something that you've painted kitchens, bathrooms and outdoors, we recommend to use our clear glaze, no shoe polishes, please. Polish is a, is a oil based product and you cannot paint onto a polished surface again. The clear glaze is water-based. All our products are non-toxic. So as a showpiece, I don't need to apply anything on top of this furniture piece. If I'm painting my kitchen, melamine mm -hmm. cupboard doors, your bathroom wall tiles, not in a shower. We don't recommend painting inside showers. You wait. I recommend to wait overnight and only apply the glaze the next day, especially when working kitchens and bathrooms. When you paint something outside, the glaze makes it water resistant and UV resistant. And all the products are non-toxic, eco-friendly and safe to use in nurseries. If on the Choco Creations Facebook page, there are questions that you don't know how to answer. Please send us an email because there are a lot happening on that page and sometimes we even miss something. Send me an email, nadine at chocopaint.co.za and ask and I'll give you the right advice. So can you see how evenly and beautiful this is painted. Okay, now I'm going to share tips. Okay, let me show you brush application. There are questions. If I get streaks, what causes it? And 90% of the time, it's the tool you're working with. I prefer, and I've said it before, to use Hamilton's brushes. Sorry, I don't have any clean ones left. So there's the name, Hamilton's. So the Hamilton's brushes 
are good quality, they last you a very long time, and they give a very even look and feel. So this specifically is an Enzyme Hamilton's brush. And let me show you on this section. So I'm painting there. I have cleaned it with my lack of thinners. And let's paint this flat part. What I do when I want this very even finish, I paint with my paintbrush. I just want to get rid of some of this paint. I paint with my paintbrush and while the paint is still wet, I even it out with a foam roller. So I'm going to show step by step. So you paint, but I promise you even when the paint is dry, it dries evenly. So I paint, make sure I touch all the sections. I personally like to take the doors off when you paint, but I left this one on so that I can, it's easier for me to show the sanding and the washing steps. And then while it's still wet, you just take your foam roller and very evenly, you just roll on top of the surface. And this gives a look and feel as if the paint was spray painted on. Does it make sense? I truly hope so. Can you see how light I press? And then I continue. So smallish sections at a time that your paint doesn't dry before you had a chance to use your foam roller. I'm now painting with my left hand. Okay, and while it's still wet, just take my foam roller. Is it nice and clear, Kaylee? Okay, thank you. And I roll. Okay, now let me give, share some creative ideas with you. Next, um, this week, Thursday, I'm going to show how to paint onto photo frames together with the melamine cupboards. Okay, and share some creative revamping of photo frame ideas. So what I'm going to do now, these sections on my door, and I have wet paint here, so we'll just work the sections, but you will see perfectly what I do there. I'm going to use the color Davit. Now, Choco Paint is focused on job creation, proudly South African, and David is named after one of our foremen that's been with the company for many years. And he came to me late last year and he said, Mama Nadine, you know, there are so many people that have got names, Choco Paint color names, but you forgot all about me. And I said, David, I promise you I haven't forgotten. It's just there are more people than colors at this point, but I promise you the next time we bring out a new color, it will be named after you. And he said, but I have the solution. If you bring out a new white, a bit, please make it David. So late last year, we um, launched this antique white and David, I hope you are safe and your family is healthy and I'm working with your color today. Danny Stair is named after Danny Howe. I speak to her most, almost every day to keep things organized and creative. So I'm adding a little bit of Davit on my artist brush, a nice, flat, even artist brush, because these brushes just spread the paint so smoothly and evenly. What I do is I paint on that section with my Davit. Damp cloth. Remember for paint techniques, this is your greatest friend. And I start wiping away. And I have not sealed Danny Stair, the blue whatsoever. And with a damp cloth, I can wipe hard, no paint is coming off. 
underneath here, this section, just to create that wide distressed look. on these sections here and you know what I like to use my finger and what I do is I paint on and I wipe and wipe and this is done only on the edges and I'll show you now what the next step is going to be and in here, we can paint as well in the grooves, damp cloth, wipe away, paint on, wipe away, and I can just lightly brush certain areas. So this is a playful part. If you want to change something, you simply return back to your Danny's day and you change something again. And now we are not done. Can you see with my brush, my finger, my damp cloth brush finger, I just create some distress. Okay, is it nicely visible on your screen? Let me add some more days after that. And once I am done with adding white here and there, it can be different colors, it really depends on your color preference but the technique will remain the same i like to use 100 grit or 80 grit sandpaper and it depends on how easily and how roughly you want to remove paint and what i like to do is i roll it up this is also hamilton's um, sandpaper and as you can see 100 grit Hold it in your hand, and now, sorry for the noise, I'm going to sand. And I'm pressing hard, can you see? Now I have a three tone. I have the wood at the bottom, I have my white, I have my blue. If at a later stage you want to add more white, I'm going to show you just dry brush it onto your surface. Okay, let's add more white. Just find my brush. And in this section, I just want to add more white. Just to get the contrast better, Maestro, help you out here. If you see him running away with something, please send a message. So I paint on, wipe off, just to create that contrast. Now on the door, I'm going to apply some white. So what I do, and this is not done with a proper paintbrush, because I'm going to sand some of it off again. So what I do is I just brush on some white. Did you might think, Nadine, are you totally crazy? Remember, if I don't like it, I just repaint it. But the complete one is standing outside, so I know it's going to be beautiful. Can you see how roughly this is done? I have one that has been painted. Let me just add white there. 
and that's ready in the kitchen so that I can show you the sanding process and what a different sanding can do to a painted surface. So this is not done solidly for a reason. This is too tone distressing. I'm going to now sand away some of the white so that it really gives it a distressed finish and that it's easy to get rid of the top coats of paint. So therefore it doesn't need to be a solid coat of paint. Let's go to the kitchen, then I'll show you the sanding process. So here is something I've already done exactly as I've shown you there. So it's roughly painted on, it doesn't look even, it doesn't look nice. So now what I'm going to do with an 80 grit piece of sandpaper to remove it more easily, I'm going to sand. So this really gives a distressed look and feel to the surface. I want some of the wood, and this is for sensitive viewers. This wasn't an antique piece of furniture. It is something that we bought as our first pieces of furniture at Jean and Richards many years ago. So I know it's not even solid wood. So I, it's not antique. Relax. And what I'll do, is our sand. I'm just going to lift this up to make it easier for myself. Can you see what effect it's creating? And look if I'm going to sand the inside of this lattice immediately I create something more vintage more stunning and I'll just reach in all the areas those smaller areas I'll take a piece Yeah, the same and I'll make sure I touch the edges because that's actually where you see the um, effect best and it makes a difference. Can you see what is created? It's beautiful and stunning and I'm going to take a video of the final um, two units. They need to come on the stoop, but I still need to style them. Let me quickly give you some ideas for your paint pots. I'm not gonna show you how to paint them. I'm just gonna show you what I have done. So here are two pots, masking tape. So this is the raw cement. Clean it with lacquer thinners. There's Karema and Dumisa's Dream. And on this one, I've used um, Dory's Dance and Comfort's Blue and a beautiful way of painting and creating pots in your garden. With the flower pots, if you use them, seal them with glaze. What I like to do is I either don't dilute my glaze if they are exposed to direct sunlight or I apply three coats of glaze onto my flower pots half an hour apart. So each coat, after each coat you wait half an hour before you apply the next one and that is when you have diluted your glaze with 3% water as per instructions on the lid. If anything is unclear, please send us an inbox, ask on Facebook, we are there to assist. Just some house rules on the Facebook pages. Choco Creations Facebook page is there to promote, share inspiration, support, share ideas related to choco paint products. Please respect those rules. If you have any questions, you can email me, but let's keep inspiring one each other. Stay positive, stay healthy, 
and thank you for watching. See you Thursday.